brothers and sisters today we are on a roll the lord today is on a roll god is on a roll today and he is just dishing us truth and truth and truth and truth and i believe that today god wants to correct the spirit of error that has been going around in the church that has been misleading the flock that has been making the flock go and fall on the wayside that has been leading the flock to the cliff but jesus as the faithful servant is calling us right now jesus as the faithful servant through his spirit of truth that he promised us yabo in john 14 is calling us right now to come back to the way, to come back to the truth, to come back to the life, which is him, which is Jesus, you know. And today we are shedding light on the old and the new testament. There is the spirit of error that is going around that Jesus came and he changed the law that was in the Old Testament. That the Old Testament actually really doesn't count. What we believe in is the New Testament. No, the Bible is not complete without the Old Testament. And I know that even those Jews, Judaism, they negate the New Testament. They only believe in the Old Testament part. But no, it is all God's written word that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So God inspired the whole written word. He breathed on the whole written word. And today I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to shed some light on this situation he is going to shed truth on this spirit of error and it is leaving right now so there's this common belief amongst believers even amongst unbelievers you know that the old testament was done away with when jesus came and this is so not true brothers and sisters brethren that this is so not true there is no way and the reason why that we say this is no way true is because jesus himself says so in matthew 5 verse 17 to 20 he says do not think i have come to abolish the law or the prophets i have come to i have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them and you have to understand the law and the prophets are all old testament references because all of the pro the law came through moses which was one of the first prophets and all the other prophets after that spoke the same message of upholding the law of being holy of being righteous in the sight of god and jesus says do not think i have come to abolish the law or the prophets i have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them to fulfill them jesus is saying i have come to make it I have come to make it happen. I have come to bring it into fulfillment, to bring it into fruition. I have come so that the law shall come to pass, that the law shall in shall, shall be in effect. You know, not saying he's breaking it, he's fulfilling filling it he's bringing it to fruition so this is going to make sense to you as we go along he says do not think i have come to abolish the law or the prophets i have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them verse 18 for truly i tell you until heaven and earth disappear not the smallest letter nor not the least stroke of pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished it, for the mere fact that you're still on earth it means the law is still in effect he says not until heaven and earth disappear will not will the law not even the smallest letter not even the least stroke of pen leave you know will be removed from the law because the law is in the old testament so jesus is saying the old testament st 
still applies. The things that God said in the Old Testament still applies. We say this over and over again that God is the same as he was yesterday, as he is today, and he, as he will be forever. But then why would he change something he said? And Jesus does not come. If Jesus is the son of the Father, why would what he says oppose the Father, but instead he fulfills? feels what the father says he is the witness of what the father says and the way that he lived honors the law it fulfills the law it does not change it it does not jesus did not come to change anything but he came in fact to fulfill because in the old testament we have the law that came through the prophet moses these are the ten commandments the ones that today we should still be living by we should still be living by to attain through to guide ourselves into a life of holiness because this is the law in the kingdom of God. If we are living in the kingdom of God, then that means we obey or we adhere to what? To the law of God. This is the law in God's government. You know what I'm saying? So there is no way that this has changed. The Ten Commandments are the way to live in the kingdom of God, you know, and a lot of people like to excuse, use Jesus as an excuse to excuse a continual life of sin. No, it's Jesus, the, the Lord God saw that we failed in upholding the law. So he sends his son, Jesus, as what? As the way, which means as an example on how to follow the law, you know. And Jesus dying doesn't mean that now we can sin the law, but it means that Jesus dying, we have unlimited chances to get right with the law, you know, unlimited practice to practice a holy life. That's the grace. That's the mercy. The grace is not to be in the sin and be comfortable in it. The grace is that when you are in the sin, Jesus has died for you so that you can practice over and over and over to be right with the law. So that means you have unlimited tries to be with accordance to the law to love the god you know with all your heart all your mind and all your soul he's giving you unlimited chances to do that he's giving you unlimited chances not to be an adulterer he's giving you unlimited chances not you know to 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 make uh graven images he's giving you unlimited chances not you know to idolize is giving you unlimited chances not to be jealous or envious of each other. That's what Jesus has died for. That's his grace. Not that now we can be in the sin comfortably and do all of those things without feeling a conviction to turn away from them. So he fulfills them. Jesus says in um Jesus says in John 14 verse 6 that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So he is the way, what? To fulfill the law. He is an example on how to keep the commandments, on how to obey the things that were said in the Old Testament. That's the thing, bro. Jesus did not come to change anything. He came to fulfill. And in the Old Testament, right, only certain people that observed the law could be could be influenced by the spirit of God but Jesus dying now he is the way he is the bridge that now we have unlimited tries you know to be in accordance with God's law to be in accordance with God's law means that your body now is being transformed into the temple of God in the old testament the God's presence was in the ark you know, it was in a special ark. But now in the New Testament, just as Jesus has fulfilled the law, we are made to be in the right, but we to be in the right of the law, saying that now Jesus has died for all our sins so that we can have unlimited trust to be right with the law and actually house the spirit of God. So Jesus is the bridge. He's the way in which we can actually walk in step 
with God's law. So believing in Jesus is believing that he is the example. He is the standard. He is the way in which you must lead your life right now, you know, and that is a life of holiness. I'm sorry to anyone who wants, you wants a, a peaceful, you know, comforting gospel that you must not change. You must not seek to be holy this is not the place to find it jesus said we must be holy because he said he didn't come to break the law to fulfill it and if the law says we must be holy then jesus is fulfilling that we must be holy by the way that he lives to set an example for us you know what i'm saying so he continues to say therefore anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom. So he's saying that if you take away these commandments and you say now, ah, Jesus overdone it. He he over like he overrode all of those things. Now we don't have to live the way the people. Jesus is saying you will be called least in the kingdom. Jesus came to fulfill, not to abolish the law. And you have to understand all of the Old Testaments from the all of the prophets, starting from Moses, they all prophesied the coming of Jesus. So if Jesus comes to abolish the law, then that means he comes to make false all of the prophets in the Old Testament. And that's not true. But he comes to prove them right. That all of them, starting from Moses, brother, they all prophesied the coming of the, the coming of Christ. God himself prophesied the coming of Christ to Abraham when he said you will be father of a lot of nations, right? Because God was prophesying that there will be a savior that will come. And so, so as Abraham is the father of faith, they will live by faith. Therefore, being in right, in accordance with the law. And I'm here to tell you, God is seeking holy, righteous people because he is holy and righteous. So he said this in 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, verse 13 to verse 16. Therefore, with my... This is in the New Testament to, 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 to show you this point that God is proving to us. This is in the Second Testament. To, I mean, in the New Testament. He says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children. Tell me what are we obedient to? We are obedient to the Lord. Let's be aware. Let's be fully sober. Let's not allow the spirit of error to work in our midst. He says, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. The New Testament here quotes the Old Testament in Leviticus 11, 44 to 45, be holy because I am holy. So now tell me, why is the New Testament quoting the Old Testament if Jesus came to abolish the law or if Jesus came to change the law? No, he came to fulfill. The one thing that people misunderstand is that Jesus just because we are forgiven of all sin means we must be in sin. No, Jesus has forgiven all our sins so that we have unlimited chances to be right with the law. Unlimited chances to practice those things that are in the Ten Commandments until we are walking in accordance with them. You must get this. If you don't get it, you miss it. Don't allow to miss it, you know. So, this is, this is the truth. Jesus did not come to change anything but to fulfill. And I know that in your hearts it is clear. This is the scripture. And all of these things that have been quoted, they have been quoted from Jesus' mouth in the New Testament. That no, the Old Testament is not done away with. Instead, it is fulfilled. Why would God put them along one another if he doesn't want us to accept all of them. You have to understand God is an intentional God. God is a God that, that does things with intention, with precision, you know, with purpose. 
You know, and that's why even you in your life have a purpose because he didn't just put you on earth just for nothing. So he wouldn't write the Old Testament, inspire the Old Testament and the New Testament if he wanted you to choose. He says, take all of it, you know, and I know that this is this is rich the audience that it was for because even for me i've been cleared i was one who believed that no now nah, we can sin galore we can do whatever we want the ten commandments don't allow anymore but that is a spirit of error and we have been given a spirit of truth the holy spirit in belief of jesus so if you say you believe in jesus that means you must believe in the way that he lived in the truth that he preached and understand that believing those two will give you life everlasting father i pray i thank you father for the spirit of truth i thank you father oh god that you are delivering us father from the spirit of error i cast out and i cast down the spirit of error in jesus mighty name jesus your name has all the power all the authority in the name of jesus father god your kingdom your government is being established here on earth just as it is in heaven yeah i thank you father oh god i feel in my spirit i feel in my spirit father god my spirit father god wants to break out father oh god and just pray father god in tongues unknown to man father god but father just as father paul father god says in the spirit father god in the new testament that father we speak father god when we speak and we pray father god for people and when we pray father god for others father we speak in tongues known to us so that we may edify each other oh god so father god i pray this is the edification for all of us the spirit of truth has come and dawned upon us in jesus name amen uh, brothers, sisters, God is on a roll today. God is making a mighty move and he's establishing his government on earth. You have to understand that the time that you live by the commandments of God, that means you live by the law of God. Then you know what that means? That means you live in the kingdom of God.